11.4 the toy racetrack in the figure has three lanes this uh, smallest or the this inner lane the middle lane and the outer lane so um, and they cannot change lanes the center lines of any two adjacent lanes are 100 millimeters apart so adjacent these neck these lines that are next to each other 100 millimeters 100 millimeters okay and the innermost lane has a radius of one meter by the way I'm just reminding you please try this on your own please try it on your own okay a if each car has the same average speed compare the time intervals needed for the cars to complete 20 laps okay so where do we even start with this kind of problem um, so the way that I would start is first of all I know I'm working with rotational motion okay so um, I can write down some things like this for example I know that S is equal to R theta or VT equals R omega or AT is equal to R alpha okay so I'm just I'm just writing down some ideas that I could potentially work with to solve this problem so I'm looking for time I'm looking for a time interval okay but I've got some linear information so it says if each car is the same average speed the speed here refers to your tangential velocity the same average speed so the speed that we're looking at like that your tangential speed for each car and then it asks for time interval so anyways I, I'm, I'm, I'm exploring my options here okay so I've got this information make sure that you understand this that the linear uh, information your s is just your 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 straight line displacement your this arc length almost uh, well it is the arc length multiplied by the radius so this is the radius for let's call this a r a and that's r b and r c okay so s is r theta v is r omega a is r alpha so the linear component quantity is related to the rotational quantity by this radius r all right now what else can i do well i know from straight line motion these 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 quantities x final is x initial plus um plus v zero time plus half a t squared right we've seen that before we've also seen v final is v initial plus two sorry that's a mistake plus a t so we've seen this before this is for straight line motion well you can also apply this and I see I've got time there right so I can apply this also to rotational motion for example this becomes so that is position so this is my rotational position theta final minus theta initial plus what is V that'll be your rotational rotational uh, velocity uh, theta time plus half what would a be remember this is constant acceleration this will be your alpha times time and then if I take that and I rewrite that in, ro in rotational form I'm going to have theta final theta initial plus alpha t okay so I'm just writing down the ideas uh, that I have or the the equations that I can possibly work with okay now we can see here that each car is the same average speed nothing is said concerning like, any kind of acceleration so my assumption here is that there is no acceleration in this problem 
all of these are moving at a constant speed and they all have the same average speed so if there's no if if there's no acceleration right if that at is zero then i know that my rotational acceleration also is zero and so if i come to this guy i know that that would be that component would be zero which tells me well first of all that my my rotational uh, velocity also remains constant okay which is just uh, obvious so I'm left with with this this guy doesn't help me because Omega final equals Omega initial but this guy might help me okay I'm so remember I'm looking for time I'm looking to try to uh, represent time on its own as a function of, of something else so let's see what happens if I take this so I've got if I rearrange this I've got time is theta final minus theta initial over Omega okay so now I've got an expression for time which then this just becomes delta theta over omega so the time taken uh, to go through some rotational displacement um, is equal to that rotational displacement divided by omega the rotational velocity okay so what now if I apply it to each of these cars so I've got to say T A is equal to delta theta of A and then the omega A, the rotational velocity of A. I've got T B, same thing, B over omega B. So it seems that I'm I might be getting on the right track here. T C is delta theta C over omega C. Alright. So now I've got the uh, the times represented here okay but the question is uh, compare the time intervals needed so we're looking at uh, car A, B and C are all going at the same VT they're all going at the same tangential velocity the same average speed right and we want to compare after 20 laps after they've completed each completed 20 laps how do their times compare how do their times compare well this is where uh, I didn't write it down yet but this is where this comes in handy because we know that VA is VB is VC they all have the same average speeds but now what is V this is why I wrote this down in the beginning your velocities are related to your rotational velocities by this radius. So we know that uh, uh, VA then is RA omega A and VB is RB omega B and VC is RC omega C. So if we would like if we would like to relate TB to TA and TC to TA, like get TB in terms of TA, TC in terms of TA, and we can use this. So omega B here, RA over RB times omega A is omega B. So we can take this and put it in here. Delta theta of B over omega B omega b is then this so we have r a r a was one well let's just do it like this r a over r b times omega a all right i hope you guys are still with me so let's just take this whole thing here again t b is delta theta b um we can even rewrite this now by saying that RA is 1 
and RB, that radius there, was 1 plus 0.1. So that was 1.1 meters. And this radius RC is 1.2 meters. Okay, make sure that you get that. And so if you rearrange, you'll see that this becomes 1.1 times delta theta B over omega A. So now this is good because now I've got TB in terms of something from A, right? But we know that omega A is simply delta theta A over TA. And so if I plug that in here, I'm going to get 1.1 times TA times delta theta B over delta theta A. Okay? Now, what what is delta theta B and delta theta A? It is the number of uh, it, well, they've all completed the same number of laps, which means they all, all three cars went through the same rotational, the same angle, the same rotation, okay? So, so all, this is just one, because these two quantities are the same. So here we have the answer. TB is 1.1 times TA, and similarly you'll find TC is 1.2 times TA. So my suggestion to you right now is absorb this and then go and try it again on your own. Now you, you might be much smarter than I am and you might have figured out a much better way, which is perfectly fine. Uh, what I tried to do in this question is to try to bring you into the, into the kind of the way that I would try to solve it. I would just see what are my equations that I have, um, what do I have available? to try to solve this guy and what and what can I extract from this uh, constant velocity was important um, they all went through the same rotational angle that's also important um, this this was a very important um, relationship that the the tangential velocities are the same which meant that I can relate these quantities to each other okay so please go try that again on your own then there's also a part B, a part B, so first of all, part A says that their speeds are the same, meaning this tangential velocity here, it, all of these are the same, okay? Whereas B says if all three cars start beside each other and finish, and finish the race at the same instant, how do their average speeds compare? So they all start next to each other, right? They all start in a straight line and they all finish at the same time after 20 laps. So they've gone through 20 laps and they all, well, they all end up at the same, at the same finish, the finish line at the same time. Okay, now what, what does that tell us? What does that tell us in terms of their rotational velocities, their velocities, etc.? It tells us that they went through the same rotation rotation in the same time so their rotational velocities are the same does that help does that make sense in the first question their speeds were the same their their tangential speeds were the same whereas now their rotational speeds are the same so you see it uh, these are two different two different scenarios so we can come back to this idea over here, where we say omega A is omega B is omega C. And what does that tell us? Well, we know that V is omega R omega, right? V is R omega. So this then gives me V A over R A is V B over R B is V C over R C. So my V B, for example, VB then is just the ratio of these radii times VA. And RB is larger, so this will then be 1.1 VA. 
and then VC also similarly is 1.2 VA. Okay, hope that helped.